In this video, I will be going over and explaining the different laws of indices. I just want you to keep in mind as I go through the video that the laws of indices aren't necessarily hard to understand. The only slightly difficult part of indices is remembering them. So here we have the first and most basic law of indices, a to the power of m times a to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m plus n. Now this is pretty self-explanatory, so let's say for example we have 2 to the power of 4, we multiply it by 2 to the power of 3, we get 2 to the power of 4 plus 3, which is equal to 2 to the power of 7. And we can easily see how this works when we expand our equation. So let's say if we were to write 2 to the 4, which is 2 times, 2 times, 2 times 2, or 2 times itself 4 times. Multiply this by 2 to the 3rd, which is 2 times itself 3 times. We see that we are simply multiplying, if we remove our brackets, then we are just multiplying 2 by itself, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times. So this is equal to 2 times itself 7 times, or 2 to the 7th power. The next most common rule of indices is the division rule. It states that a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m minus n. And this once again is pretty self-explanatory. Let's take the example of 2 to the 4th divided by 2 to the 3rd. We simply get 2 to the power of 4 minus 3, which is equal to 2 to the power of 1, which is equal to 2. And if we expand this, then we can also see what is happening. So 2 to the 4th, again, is 2 times itself 4 times. And we are dividing this by 2 to the 3rd. So we can simply cancel out these 2's, and we are left with 2 to the power of 1. It's more likely that you'll come across this rule in the form of fractions. So let's say 2 to the 4 divided by 2 to the third, and once again you just write that as 2 to the power of 4 minus 3. It's essentially the same thing, just written differently. Okay, the third rule of indices is the power rule, and that states that a to the power of m whole to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m times n. So this is the first time that we're seeing multiplication happening inside of the power. So this is also pretty self-explanatory. Let's use the same example of 2 to the 4 and 2 to the 3. So 2 to the power of 4 to the power of 3 is equal to 2 to the power of 4 times 3, which is equal to 2 to the power of 12. And this law is also pretty intuitive if you try and open it up. And I recommend that you try to do that yourself and understand why it works. Now, the next law of indices is the law where anything is taken to the power of zero. This law can't necessarily just be explained. We kind of just have to take it as a straight up fact. So any number or any number a to the power of zero is equal to one. So for example, two to the power of zero is equal to one. Similarly, 1,273 to the power of zero is equal to one and let's say negative 2.530 to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So any number to the power of 0 will always be equal to 1. Now the next law we come across is when we take any number to the power of a negative number. So over here it says that a to the power of negative n is equal to 1 over a to the power of n. And this also, like all of the other rules, is pretty self-explanatory. Let's say we have 2 to the power of negative 4. This is equal to 1 over 2 to the power of 4. We can take 5 to the power of negative 7. This is equal to 1 divided by 5 to the power of 7. Now something that you should note is that 1 over a to the power of negative n is equal to a to the power of n. And this is because 1 over a to the power of negative 1 is equal to 1 over 1 over a to the power of n, which is equal to, we take the reciprocal of this, so we get 1 times a to the n divided by 1, which is equal to a to the power of n. And last but not least, we have the law in which we take 
a number to the power of a fraction. So over here we have written that a to the power of 1 over n is equal to a to the nth root. Now this would look something like 8 to the power of 1 over 3 is equal to the cube root, or 8 to the third root. And we know that this is equal to 2. And let's say if we take 25 to the power of 1 over 2, then we get the square root of 25, which is equal to 5. More often than not, you'll see expressions in the form of a to the power of m over n, rather than there just being a fraction by itself. In this case, all you have to do is simply expand it and see what it really is. It's just a to the m whole to the power of 1 over n. This is utilizing our power rule that we have back here. So this is essentially equal to the n root of a to the power of m. Now let's go back and look at our set of equations. All you need to do now is just remember each and every one of these. And it shouldn't be too hard to memorize these equations.